Eva McCann in Arizona. Thanks to both of you. Let's bring in our panel. I could be mean and make this all about childhood vaccines and whether or not Trump lost New Mexico twice, but I'm not going to. Let's talk about some other stuff. Uh, I want to start with this controversial ad um, that features uh, Julia Roberts. Take a listen. In the one place in America where women still have a right to choose, you can vote any way you want. And no one will ever know. Did you make the right choice? Sure did, honey. Remember, what happens in the booth stays in the booth. You're a Republican woman. What's your take on that? Because it's, it's obviously targeted at Republican women. It is, and Julie Roberts, I think she's from Georgia, so they found a swing state actress to do it. Um, you know, we all talk about the women vote, both on campaigns and here on TV, and we lump women all together as if they're one monolithic, we all think the same thing. It kind of sounds like an ex-husband or ex-boyfriend talking about their, their ex-wife or girlfriend here. The truth of the matter is there are women who will go to the polling booth and tell all their friends that they are voting for Trump till, and they'll go and vote for Harris. But there's also going to be a lot of women who go to Lululemon with their friends in Pilates class and say how terrible Trump is and they're you know, going to go vote for him because not every female voter is an abortion-driven voter. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's a motivational uh, issue. For I don't think they voters. talk about abortion rights. No, here, but no. That, that's how we typically talk about the women's vote. And that's yeah. what Harris is running all of her, her, mostly all of her ads targeting women on. And yes, the party has, you know, they've, there have been words and said things that don't help the issue. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like when you look back at the two, 2004 campaign, we had security moms. These were suburban women who maybe weren't too happy with the, with the Bush White House, but they cared about the safety of the country. I think we're going to see a lot of suburban women this time around mm -hmm. who, even though they really don't like that, that Donald Trump said uh, what he said last night and J.D. Vance's comments and the whole thing, but at the end of the day, they are worried about crime in their community, about inflation, yeah. and about uh, security. But it water. goes deeper than that. I mean, Trump has struggled with women voters since the first time he ran. I mean, so this has been a longstanding problem. And we were seeing in polling and focus groups in early as you know, 2018, where women were proactively bringing up, not even about abortion, they've, the fear of like, you can't even have the TV on when he's on the air with your children in the room, or, or just the, the meanness that they don't like, or the policies. I mean, there are plenty of Trump policies Outside other than, abortion, hold on, I let you finish, why don't you let me finish. You know, there are plenty of other policies, I mean, under Donald Trump, because he did try to repeal the Affordable Care Act. You know, it was harder for poor women to have access to the full range of health care services like prenatal care. So women understand the stakes of a Trump presidency in multiple. I agree. We are not a monolith. We care about a range of issues. But I would also say that there are a range of reasons why women will be voting for Vice President Harris and they may not vote for Trump. There is. The, I just I'll come back to you because Mike and I have nothing to say about this topic. Um, <laughs> You know women. I, I, you know, I found that ad incredibly women. insulting. You thought it was uh, oh, totally as a as a. My wife and I argue about politics all the time. We're on opposite sides of this. And is that right? And to watch two women wink at each other like we're going to lie to our husbands, but we're going to do no, whatever. I think the we're first doing. one was a Democratic woman. That was my assumption that the only the MAGA woman was lying in this ad. Oh. I, that doesn't make it better. I'm no, just saying that I was just, my interpretation. I'm interpret like, this is they got some marriage problems. They got they got to work out. Well, well, that's a whole other show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that, the, the, one of the things that's interesting is there's this theory of the case, and I don't know if it's true, but Democrats are saying openly about this secret women's vote. Okay, so it's not just Julia Roberts or whoever paid for that ad. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin, a Democrat running for Senate in Michigan, she posted on Twitter or X, quote, there's a phenomenon I've been hearing about on the trail, the secret women's vote here in Michigan. Now, I mean... I don't know if that's real or wishful thinking, and maybe we'll find Republicans out. Republicans are saying the same thing. About this, about this. There's a secret, secret women vote. I do, I do. I think there's a secret women vote of, of women who, look, when you hear some of the things that some of the surrogates say, yeah, it's not great. There's a podcast bro culture that most women, I think Nikki Haley said it, it it's, we wish that maybe they'd be a little bit worried a little bit differently, but at the end of the day, women are balancing their family budgets. They're making hard decisions on whether to send their kids to so soccer camp or whether they can pay for the nanny. They're trying to figure out how they get prenatal care, how they, they can afford you know, caregiving older parents. There are a lot of issues that women's balance every single day that I think will outweigh whether or not they like the tone that someone took in a speech. Is there any data behind the ad and the Slotkin comment, or is it just vibes? I mean, obviously you have uh, yeah. Liz Cheney out there 
Yeah. Um, but is she a, a phenomenon or is she kind of a unicorn? I don't know that well, Liz Cheney may be a unicorn for other reasons, but I think the challenge here is that, again, if you're a woman and you're in the sandwich generation, yes, guess what? Kamala Harris is going to let you have help, home aid help for your uh, sick loved one. So I think it's anecdotal. There's not hard data. And, there's, and that's one of the challenges of this election. There's a lot of things that we can't measure in the polls. Polls are not picking up, for example, the 300,000 young people who registered to vote after um, the several phenomenon in terms of different people endorsing, we don't know who the wh yeah. where they are, where they are. Stand by. We got a lot more to discuss, and uh, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll bring you in a little bit more in the next one, maybe. Mike. If you, if you if you play your cards right, <laughs> Kamala Harris just arrived in Arizona. We'll listen out for her new lines on the stump, if there are any new lines on the stump, with just five days left in the race. Plus, Elon Musk, another name floated to play a role in Trump's administration if Trump wins. What that could look like, and policy specifics from both Harris and Trump. What they've both said about an issue that hits home for so many of you, prescription drug prices. We're going to break down their plans. Coming up. Have I got news for you. Saturday at 9 on CNN. Are you sure? You tend to exaggerate. Go ahead. Call them yourself. Thank you for calling Aetna. This is Anne. How can I help you? Do you really have Medicare plans that cover dental, vision, and hearing? Yes. All three. Plus, we have plans that include a monthly